Now with text to speech and enumeration in Espanol. You know, people like me are, in a sense, early adopters. The colorful cast of characters of eccentrics who quit their jobs and drop out of university to start a YouTube channel to show off, you know, them riding a bicycle and wearing a bikini, they are early adopters. In the previous video, Grasshopper presented himself as part of a movement of early adopters, when in reality he would be more accurately described as part of a cast of New Age clowns who don't understand the history nor the full spectrum of libertarianism and veganism as well, which will be further explained in the following clips. You are there. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. We're all set. Our doc becomes a beatbox in the earlier part of the program. Your name, sir? Uh, Mr. Lewis Marvin. Yes, would you speak up now? Yes. Yes, I that don't, don't mean by that to crowd the mic, but raise your voice louder. Oh, all right. What's your beef? My beef you is beef against... beef with your tailor? <laughs> My beef is against the slaughter of animals. Against the slaughter of animals? You wouldn't string your son up on a ramp and put a shackle around his legs and hoist your son into the air and cut his throat and let his blood drop upon the floor. You wouldn't do that to your dog. And yet to millions of people all over the world string up by their legs and cut their throats and let their blood fall on the ground. Would you prefer that they caught it in some kind of a container? This lamb... This lamb has the same feeling, the same eyesight... And the same hearing as you. Just one thing. He's got to go. For the last thousand years, men have slaughtered lambs. And in this is the most meaningful law ever known to men. As a matter of fact, if you look into the Old Testament of the Bible, you'll find instructions from God to slaughter lambs. I say to you that as you cannot hear the screams of a lamb in the slaughterhouse, you cannot hear the screams of your son on the battlefield. I uh, would like to ask you a, a meaningful question at this point. Are you a vegetarian? I am indeed. Uh, do you ever eat tomatoes? I would say to you, yes for no. the last 3,000 years, man well, has now, created... I'm asking you a question. Do you ever eat tomatoes? For the yes last or no. 3, 000... Do you eat tomatoes? Of course I do. You do? Do you know that there is now scientific proof that when you cut a tomato, it screams. There is electrical... There is electrical... You are a killer of tomatoes. And My friend, the me. tomato you're doesn't pain. The tomato you're feels no land. pain. And you're the tomato's tomatoes. blood doesn't flow. Tomatoes. 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 Tomatoes.
decided in 2020 to run for president. If you were a boy, what do you think your dick size would be? Okay, so I'm a really like weak ass, little ass bitch. So a part of me feels like I would have a small dick, but I also am like a fierce ass bitch. And I have like pretty big feet for a girl and like decently sized hands. So like, I don't know, you know, but I mean, Either way, I would hella work with it because it's the motion of the ocean, you know? Is Tana short for something? No, Tana is not short for something in the face. And I'm like, yeah, it stands for French Montana. And then some people are like, haha, very funny. And then some people are like, really? You are not destiny. It is not your job to decide when a living thing's life is over. And you, DT, Donald Trump, are not God no matter how much you think you are. And if... If he doesn't think he is God, he thinks he is the fucking chosen one in some or some shit. We're all just fucking jammed between his rich ass toes. Honestly, fuck this shit. I am moving. If this is my president, I don't think say things I don't mean. So fucking yes. Good on you, Miley, for speaking up. This piece of shit, seriously. I mean, I don't talk like this about people often, but these people deserve it. Are they even people? Are they even humans? I don't know. I really don't know. They're just Parasites, that's what I see them as. So Miley Cyrus, who is obviously very well known for her in-depth political analysis, puts out some tweets about Donald Trump and her affection for Bernie Sanders. And then her bimbo followers parrot Miley's goofy statements. I think this is how Mao, Stalin, and Hitler got started. Which begs the questions. A. Should Miley Cyrus be requested to source out and explain her genius opinions? B. Should Freely the Banana Girl be requested to source out and explain Miley's opinions? C. Should Tana be requested to source out and explain Freely's opinions? D. Should women have the right to vote in the first place? He shouldn't there be tighter controls on what can and cannot be voted upon. F. Could any of these girls have tighter control or are they simply loose by their very nature? G. Should they all be forced to take troll quizzes before voting and airing their super stupid opinions? H. Is the end near and total destruction of the modern world inevitable and should we all just give up now? This is Diana. She has a website at vegangirl.com. In 2007 she presented an article that explains a vegan's case for voting for Ron Paul in 2008. The article is still on the website. Diana is obviously not a bimbo, she's a very kind and thoughtful person. Diana's political intelligence is obviously far more advanced than grasshoppers may ever become. So political intelligence is not limited to gender as there are many lame clowns who are members of both and some, who are more politically astute than most who like to change it up. Such as Bruce Jenner for example, who was originally a Ted Cruz supporter and is now a Donald Trump supporter, I'm guessing. I also don't know whether Diana's consciousness has evolved to the understanding of the serious need for border control as part of a sensible environmental protection program. Let me just interject something here that is rather important. Biological existence is such that you have to kill to live. And vegetarians have no way out because uh, plants also are forms of life and to, to the degree that they are aware and they are aware to a certain degree they think they're human and when you chew up plants you are making a very painful experience for cabbages and carrots and things like that and you can't get out of it and the only possible solution of the dilemma that we are in ethically that we have to eat in order to, to live that being is killing. The only possible solution to this dilemma is to reverence food and to cook it as well as possible and enjoy it to the full. There is no other ethical response that is in any way possible to this situation. And also, 
you must, as a human being, remember that you aren't the only pebble on the beach, that you belong just as much as the fish and the cows and uh, the apples. You belong to a mutual eating society. And something in the end is going to eat you. Now, human beings are not as a rule eaten by large creatures. We've got rid of them. Things like lions and tigers that chew up on human beings. There are not many of them around. We are eaten instead by tiny creatures. And the, the morticians are a very vicious group of people. Because they are trying to deprive all those microorganisms of the proper human food. When they bury them in uh, formaldehyde and encase them in concrete uh, things with complicated bronze caskets, where instead of giving the worms a ball, they just do nothing. They just rot there, you know, and become slowly more and more uh, sort of attenuated and parchment-like. Instead of continuing into the flow of the course of life, which is the proper thing to do, to make an act of respect to the earth from which you have gained all these uh, the life and give yourself back to it when you die. After all, that's only courteous. <laughs> and this keeps the thing, the thing running. So uh, we should start a campaign at once to abolish the whole mortician business and uh, put it in, in entirely new lines where dead human beings are buried in great fields about three feet underground, which are left for a long time until all stinks and everything have vanished. And this is the most beautiful soil for growing corn and lettuce and artichokes and vines and everything beautiful. So you go back into the cycle. So what's the problem? Let's say the universe has been evolving over an estimated 13.7 billion years and that after the last billion years of the evolution of life on Earth, humans began to migrate out of Africa in the last 200,000 years as the map shows. The world population began accelerating rapidly with the introduction of new technologies that would make production of goods and services more plentiful, so it took less time to produce more food, clothing, housing, and transportation, for example. This occurred in the 1700s along with more libertarian government inspired by people such as Adam Smith in the UK. New technologies along with new liberties and new resources supported a continued expansion in the West such as the USA. As the populations continued to expand their footprints, the biocapacities decreased because more life-sustaining foliage, soils, and waters for example were being destroyed. In the late 60s, this became a serious concern and native citizens decreased their birth rates. Unfortunately special interests operating in governments supported massive immigration invasions for cheap labor and cheap boats. Many so-called green organizations and politicians were paid off to keep their mouths shut and look the other way. Because the immigrants are coming from lower-income countries with lower IQs, who are seeking bigger governments, paying out more welfare, the environments in the USA are degrading as well as the intelligence levels as debts and taxes are increasing and the criminals involved just keep lying to keep the nightmare going. So what has all of this got to do with Donald Trump and the vegan bimbos you ask? Trump wants to free up the USA from the slavery of hideous government programs that tax, spend, regulate and indebt the citizens of the USA and protect them with a wall and better immigration control so that the USA is not constantly overpopulated as the previous diagrams explain. Bernie Sanders and Hillary Clinton on the other hand are promoting brute force theft in broad daylight in the form of massive taxes, regulations, immigration, and government takeovers of businesses. For every 10 million immigrants in the USA approximately 1 billion animals will be killed for food per year, 50 million acres wasted on their ecological footprints and thousands murdered in homicides, DUIs, rapes, robberies, and billions in welfare year after year after year. 
But of course these dopes don't get into any of that because they're really not serious about saving the animals or the world or anything like that anyway.